there are dozens of Debian-based distributions out there, and they're all good or bad to varying degrees, depending on how often they're updated, how well they're maintained, so on and so forth. One of my favorite Debian-based distributions is actually called Sparky Linux. I've looked at this before, I've made a video on it before, and it's really good. Recently, they came out with version 6.0, and I thought I'd take a look at it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be taking a look at Sparky 6.0 Potolo. I'm sure I'm going to be butchering that name. I probably won't use it again. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's new, and then we'll install it and take a look around. Let's go ahead and jump in. So here are the release notes. This came out, I think, yesterday. So... This is hot off the presses, as they say. So it's based on Debian 11 Bullseye, which is very impressive considering that Debian 11 Bullseye just came out like last week. The fact that they were able to go through and release Sparky Linux 6.0 just a week after the stable edition of Debian was released is just highly impressive, especially when you consider there are other Debian slash Ubuntu releases that just take forever to get their releases out after an LTS release. So... The fact that this just took a week is very impressive. So, like I said, it's based on Bullseye. They have several updated packages. Now, because this is Debian, don't expect Bleeding Edge. You're going to find very stable software here. That's the purpose of it. Now, that being said, I don't think anybody is going to be using Sparky Linux who expects Bleeding Edge. If you're going to, if you're on, a, if you want Bleeding Edge, you're either going to find a Debian-based distro that's based on unstable, or you're going to be using something like Arch. So you use something like Sparky because you want a Debian-based distribution that has a desktop pre-installed for you that also has the most stable software available. So that's what Sparky Linux is. What seems to be the biggest change is they've changed their way of distributing apps from something called Aptus to the App Center. So we're going to have to take a look at that. It supposedly has around 2,300 popular applications and 20 pre-configured desktops. We'll see how that's been redesigned or how it's well. I remember that vaguely. I'm not sure if I rem remember liking it or not. I think I thought it was weird. But we'll take a look at it again this time. So we also have a brand new welcome screen. And we also have something called Rise Up VPN Application Pre-Installed. So if you're interested in using a VPN called Rise Up, then you could use that. Most people are probably going to use something different. Sparky 6 comes in XFCE, KDE, and LXQt, so if you are familiar with any of those desktops, you'll probably be fine. Uh, apparently, you can also go through and look at other pre-configured desktops as well. We'll take a look at that, that here in a few minutes when we install. So let's go ahead and just jump into the installation. So we're going to be installing this in a virtual machine. I've given this 8 gigabytes of, of RAM and 4 CPU cores. We'll just go ahead and get this started. So we want U.S. English. We'll select that. Very pretty startup screen. Oh, I forgot to tell you that I actually did select the Plasma version of Sparky Linux this time. It's been a while since I've looked at an ISO with, with, ice, with Plasma on it, so I decided to choose this. Now, this is their brand new welcome screen. We'll take a more in-depth look, look at that once we've installed. So let's go ahead and Double click the installer here and get started. So this is the Calamari's installer. We want American English. We'll just go ahead and run through this real quick. Detroit is fine. Uh, English US default is fine. We'll erase the disk. Do we get it? We do get an option for swap. We'll just do swap to file. And we will go ahead and hit next. We will enter my name here. And that all is also fine. We'll call this Sparky. OS just for fun and we'll have a very nice password that no one will ever be able to guess right here and we by default I remember this part here they have login automatically automatic uh, checked by default I'm gonna uncheck that because what's the point of having a password if you're just gonna you know log in automatically and then we'll hit next and then we'll install we'll see how long this takes I'll cut the video here and we'll come back once it's done Okay, so that's done. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down normally instead of hitting the restart button. But if you're in this position, you could go through and just hit the restart button after you've removed your installation media. For me, I have to remove it from VirtualBox, so I have to shut down. And it actually did it for me this time. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So we're just going to hit start again. And we'll see what the startup times look like here in VirtualBox. 
it'll probably be just fine like normal. The days of Linux starting up slow are pretty much gone. Even on, you know, slow hardware, startup times are usually pretty good. So let's go ahead and enter our password here. This is SDDM, I believe, for your your display manager. And we got a, the traditional KD uh, splash screen. And then we have our KDE desktop. So this is the brand new Sparky Linux 6 welcome screen. We have the home page, which is probably just going to take us to, yeah, it's just going to take us to the Sparky Linux home page. If we close this, it does bring up the welcome page again. So that's kind of nice. Uh, we have the forums, wiki, git repo. It probably takes us to everything that they have on git, a donate button, app center, which we'll take a look at here in a minute. Upgrade. I wonder what this does. So this is the system update tool. It's just running apt in the background, probably. So it's just a GUI. And we'll go ahead and actually run this and see what it comes up with. And it's actually going to open up a terminal. So it's not even doing all that much. It's just a button to run apt, which is nothing wrong with that. So we have a... Your system is up to date. Okay, and it's still asking for another password, so okay, so this is going to be for the locale. So I think we can just exit this because we already have English installed. That's if you want to install another locale, and that's done. So we have a little box down here. I don't, you probably can't see it. It says updates are available, run system upgrade now. Let's run that again. I think we're going to have the same result as we just had. I'm assuming. Exiting now. Okay. All right, so we got update. We have about system info, info, and then backup. So backup probably uses. So when you hit backup system, it takes you to a wiki page. Okay, um, I'm not sure how useful that is really. I would expect it to launch like something like Time Shift or something instead of just being a link to a web page. But better float your boat. And so we'll go ahead now and check out the App Center. Again, why you have to enter your password to get to the App Center, I'm not sure. You should only have to enter your password when you want to install an application. You shouldn't have to do it to, to launch into a, the App Store. Or at least I wouldn't think so. It, it seems like they're asking for root permission before they actually need root permission. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and take a gander around this. Now, supposedly this is brand new. Uh, whether or not I've actually looked at this before, I don't remember what it was like in Sparky Linux 5. It's been quite a while, so... We'll look at games here. So there's uh, obviously we always go for games. Let's see, see what a card what card games they have in here. So a whole bunch of solitaire games. Cool. Um, interestingly enough, the sometimes the when you go to a page, it reloads the whole application. So let's see if we can do that again. Extreme Tux Racer. Yeah, see see how it like, reloads the whole App Center thing? That's really odd. I think it did that before, and I commented on that before. So there's a whole bunch of games here. That's really nice. Uh, I wonder about, like, is there like a, a search thing here? Let's see if Steam is in here. Uh, type of Q. So it actually opens like a, another application in order to do the, the, the search. That is weird. Uh, and apparently Steam is not in here. I don't... S nope. No Steam here. Oh, yep, right here. Steam is at the end. Uh, so your search for Steam should be at the top because there's not many things. I mean, these other... Th I mean, it's alphabetical order, but still. So Steam is here. Lutris is here. Uh, we'll go back to here and take a look at uh, the desktops. That's be interesting. So if you want to install any of these desktops, you can do so. Awesome Window Managers here. BSPWM, Budgie. I don't know what CDE is. Cinnamon, I don't know what Draco is either. I've never heard of that. Enlightenment, Fluxbox, Gnome Flashback. I'm assuming... Is, what is Gnome Flashback? Gnome, does it say... It doesn't say what it actually is. I've never heard of Gnome Flashback before. Maybe it's like a Gnome 2 version of Gnome. Uh, we got i3, Ice Window Manager, JWM, KD Plasma, Lumia, Lumina, Lumina, X, LXDE, LXD, so that's pretty old. That's not even being maintained anymore, as far as I know. LXQ, Mate, NSCD, I don't know what that, again, I don't know what that is. Openbox, Openbox Noir, PECWM, never heard of that. Trinity, 
U U K U I. Never heard of that again. Window Maker and XFC. Uh, so there's a big selection here, and some of these are really rare. Like so much so, I've never even heard of them. We don't have things like DWM here. X Monad's not here, but the fact that there is even a selection is really cool. I'm just gonna install one of these. I'm just very curious, so I'm gonna install BSPWM and see what it looks like to install it. I'm just very curious. It's gonna oh, it's gonna change to light DM, so that's really not great. We're gonna maintain SDDM because we don't, light DM will just break uh, for whatever, whatever reason. Light DM hates me and breaks on everything that I touch, so we'll just stick with SDDM. Uh, the install time on that is actually quite long. I usually when you install BSP, I don't remember BSPWM being actually as you know long to install when I installed it on Debian before. But yeah, so this is let's see if we got like GIMP or whatever graphics editors, Blender's here, Dark Tables here, GIMP is here, Inkscape is here. So this is a very well f stocked app center. It's also really weird because it's kind of like an uh like a web app or something i'm not sure why it reloads between pages it's just something that it does I and mean, it's not a big deal but it's weird uh the search is also really weird the fact that it opens up as like a separate application in order to search something instead of just like a drop down or something that's again weird so uh, the way they do application the app center here is just a little out of the ordinary, but the fact that they've done this themselves and it's original and not, they're not just using Discover or uh, GNOME software or something like that is highly impressive. The fact that you've spent time to do something on your own, uh, I find that admirable. Whether or not it's a good app center, it would be for you to judge. I think there's a lot of stuff here and it works. I think that's probably the only t two criteria that you have to have in order to be a good app store is you have to have a lot of software and it has to work. If you meet those two criteria, you've succeeded in what you're trying to do. So good job on that. Okay, we'll close this and let's take a look now at installed software. So development, icon browser, graphics, Gwen view, image magic, uh, LibreOffice is here is as well. Ocular and scan light for scanning internet. We got Firefox ESR, KD connect, Kget, which I believe is a GitHub client, conversation, a whole bunch of uh, obviously Plasma applications that are going to be here as well. Quite RSS, which is an RSS feed reader, Rise Up VPN, and Thunderbird, and we had just that that, that menu just uh, crashed. Interesting. Uh, for multi multimedia, we got Eliza, which is the KDE music app, K3B, which is a uh, MP3 tagger. Uh, most of the stuff is just uh, KDE Plasma applications, but we got something here called SparkyTube, which I'm... What exactly is this? Copy and paste video address below. So this is like a front end for like YouTube DL? Cool. Uh, that's really interesting. I actually kind of want this for my system. You can just use YouTube, YouTube DL, but the fact that it's... You know, GUIs are kind of fun to play with every once in a while. I'm that's what I'm assuming that this is, is a front end for YouTube DL. Okay, that's cool. Let's go back here. Uh, VLC is our video player. And then uh, we have like a, I believe that Voco screen is a, like a screen capture application. Uh, LibreOffice is here. And then we got the standard settings and system utilities and stuff. So outside of the Plasma application packages, there's not a ton of stuff here. That is not that stuff. Like uh, there, we have nitrogen here to change wallpapers and stuff. That may have been installed when I installed BSPWM, so that may not be here by default. But then all the rest of the stuff is mostly just Plasma applications, along with LibreOffice and a couple others. So it's a very minimal install. There's not a lot here, and it's just using the standard. So if we open up like Dolphin, this is just the standard breeze theme so it's not like very customized in terms of theme uh they did change the icons which is nice um yeah dolphin is so good i wish i wish you could i wish i could use dolphin on my machine but it has so many dependencies you got to install basically the entire plasma stack in order to get dolphin to work 
but I, I really do think that Dolphins is the best file manager out there. But in terms of lightweightness <laughs> or lightweightedness, that, that's not a word, but whatever. In terms of heft, in terms of dependencies and stuff, uh, it kind of turns me away from it. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at some statistics for Sparky Linux. Now, we got to remember, we've opened up some things here. So this isn't going to be fresh out of the box statistics, but we'll do first. We'll do uname a. Let's see what kernel we're running. We're in five point ten. So this is fairly old, but again, remember we're in Debian, so we're expecting that. Uh, let's go ahead and do free dash m. Now remember, I've been, I've opened up some things, so this may not be indicative to what you'll get. Uh, fresh out of the you know box after fresh reboot, 511 megabytes. That's just really good. Now also, Linux uses more memory depending on how much memory you give it. So if you I've given this machine eight gigabytes, it may use less on a machine that has less memory. So uh, at least that's what I've come to understand. But then that's actually true. I don't even know. Uh, but we'll just assume it is true because I heard somebody else say it. Good job, Matt. Anyways, we do have a swap file here as we chose before. Let's see if we have htop installed by default. We do not. So sudo apt install htop. Oops. You gotta actually spell it right. So we're just running 66 tasks, 151 threads. Not bad at all. I mean, for a plasma desktop, that's actually pretty much on the low side and plasma isn't really a heavy desktop these days so that's actually really impressive so that's that let's go ahead and quit of that and let's see if neofetch is installed by default it is not so neofetch gives us a really nice little logo here it tells us the bash version is 5.1.4 plasma is 520.5 so that's a little older than what i would hope it would be but again this is De debian so you're gonna kind of expect that. Now, what I find most surprising about every Debian install that I've account encountered so far is the number of packages that it installs. Now, some of this is going to be KDE's fault because KDE just installs a ton of packages, but even that machine behind me that's running uh, just BSPWM and Debian, like stock Debian, it has almost like 1,700 packages, and I don't know what they are. It's really weird. I, and this is kind of weird, too, because we just went through all the applications, and there's not a ton of applications here. I've seen distros with way more applications than this that seem to have fewer packages installed. So, what again, that might be just mostly the whole KDE thing, but that's a lot of packages. So, we're running KWIN Window Manager. So this is the Sparky theme. So, they did actually go through and do a custom theme, although I say that this is mostly just uh, Breeze. Uh, the icons are Tala, and this is console, obviously, and this is your terminal color scheme. So, it's really nice. If you're looking for a Debian-based distro that is lightweight, well put together, and is easy to install, Sparky is a great option. And it's just as great an option as it was back in version 5. Personally... I would install this over just regular Debian. And the reason why is because Debian hides their non-free ISOs. And that is a terrible experience because everybody needs the non-free ISO. Almost everybody needs it in, in order to get Wi-Fi work. And the fact that they hide it is a pain in the ass. And the experience of installing Sparky is better because it uses a more modern installer. It also has desktop environments that are pre-set up for you so they at least look somewhat good and they haven't gone through and spent a ton of time customizing the desktop environments that i've looked at actually before i don't know i think about it let's go ahead and take a look and see what the bspwm thing looks like i'm just really curious so let's go back here and log out and see what the bspwm thing looks like so we could go down here and choose bspwm for the, from the selector and enter the password again and this is BSPWM with what the freak is that panel? Uh, I, <laughs> is that that can't be Polybar? That has to be like something like Tint. What is that panel? 
I don't even know. I'm going to find out though. X prop. So this is the tint two panel. Okay. I've never actually used tint two before, so I couldn't, re it's not surprising that I didn't recognize it. So they use the tint two panel by default. I would get rid of that, uh, like right away and install polybar. Polybar I think is way better, but if you're more interested in a more desktop environment type panel, uh, tint two would probably be a good idea for you because it shows open windows. It has clickable events and clickable icons and all that stuff. It has an icon tray by default. Uh, tint two is actually good. Now, what um, what terminal is this? This is the uh, this looks like X term. I bet you this is X term. Uh, so yeah, this is X. Uh, I believe that's what X term comes you know uh, shows up as. But yeah, so this is BSP, BSPWM. As you can tell, we got the Fibonacci layout or whatever it's called. Let's see. Super Shift C to close? No. Super X to close? Super Q to close? Super Shift X to close? All right. Well, we're going to go CD into this. I, unfortunately, I can't zoom in because I have no clue how to zoom in on, on, on X term. Is it Control Page Up? Control Shift Page Up? Control Shift Plus? No. So I don't know how to zoom in. So I apologize for this. We'll just CD into .config BSPWM and do an NLS here. So we have the BSPWMRC, so we'll seed up a level and see if we have excess uh, HKD. Uh, I can't even see that, so I can't imagine that you can either. CD SXHKD, Vim into SXHKDRC, and Vim is not installed by default. Apt install Vim. All right. We're just going to pause there for a second and have a mini rant. Every distribution should have Vim installed by default. It should be a rule. I mean, <laughs> it should be a rule. I mean, everybody uses Vim. It's, it's so silly that it's not installed by default. And it's not just Sparky Linux that doesn't have installed by default. Ubuntu doesn't have it installed by default either. And that's just a travesty. All right. So we'll do a Vim into SXHKDRC. And we'll see what the kill command is. So super, super alt escape is quit. Now that's going to be quit BSPWM. Uh, so super shift W shoot is that what that says super shift W super super shift W super shift W that is the weirdest key binding for closing a window I've ever seen in my life I've never seen it before uh, by default that is really really odd yeah so I'd change that like immediately that's really weird so uh ro they have rofi installed by default so they use rofi instead of dmenu i like that i prefer rofi over dmenu so that's a good thing but also they use super r to show it <laughs> okay so i've seen alt p i've seen super d i've seen super shift enter super space all those things super r is never really rofi now i can understand where they're going with it r rofi makes sense uh w for quit not quite as obvious. All right, so that's BSPWM. I don't need to go through any of that stuff. I'm was just very curious what how they did the theming and stuff on BSPWM, and it looks really nice. So because they have PyCon running, you can tell because there's transparency and stuff. They're using Xterm. I don't think that that's what I would actually use as a terminal emulator by default because most people don't know how to use Xterm. I know I don't. I have no clue how to zoom in on Xterm. And I'm assuming you use X resources in order to add that functionality and probably change the font size and stuff like that. But even then, I don't even know if that's true. I could be completely making that up in my mind. So yeah, that is BSPWM on Sparky Linux 6.0. I'm interested in looking at a couple other desktops. Who cares how long this video is going to be? Let's just, so Super Shift W to close this, which is just whatever. And we'll do X, actually we'll Super Shift W this and we'll do Super R. Uh, apt, apt us. Yeah, this is what we're looking for. And then we'll go for desktops and let's install. Let's see what their i3 one looks like. Cause that's the only other window manager that I really care about. I've used the only other one that I've really used. I've used Fluxbox before. I've used awesome before. Well, let's go ahead and use install awesome. Why not? See what their awesome installer install looks like. That installed a lot faster than BSPWM did, which is interesting. 
So we'll just do Super Shift W on this. We'll just, or X in, I suppose. Super Shift W, and then we'll do Super Shift uh, Escape, I think is what I said was Exit BSPWM. Or maybe it was Super Alt Escape. It was Super Alt Escape. Again, that's really weird. Uh, so I've seen Super Alt Q, Super Shift Q, Super Shift X. Uh, usually Escape's not a key that they use. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and go into Awesome here. And enter the password. And this is what Awesome looks like. Uh, that is, the I believe, the regular Awesome bar. But it is a little theme. So if we open up a terminal here. We're in the fantastic floating mode, which is really should not be the default mode. And this is going to be X term again. It is. Yeah. So let's go ahead and go into CD dot, dot config. Awesome. And we'll do an LS here and we'll vim RC dot Lua. Oops. I don't have my, I don't have my aliases here, so I can't do that. So, again, I'm not going to be able to zoom in because, you know, awesome sauce. So, we'll scroll down here. I'm assuming we're going to have probably the same really weird key bindings for awesome as we did with BSPWM. So, let's see if we can mod key K is going to raise the client to the top, okay? So, we got mod shift Q to, re to start to quit awesome. Mod control R to restart awesome. So that actually makes sense. That's actually the first key binding in either of these things that actually has made complete sense to me. Prompt menu bar. I don't see the one to, con to close. Probably just missing it. I'm sure I am. Alright, it doesn't matter. But for the most part, that's just a standard awesome configuration. Uh, they've changed the color of the bar. They've gotten rid of the title bar. And they've removed some of the tags. So they've only given us four tags. You'd have to go through and add those other tags if you wanted more tags. Obviously, I would. So, yeah, that is Sparky Linux. I, I'm impressed that they have the, the window managers and the desktop environments to add on to that. That's really great. So like I was saying before, before I got distracted with other, you know the window managers, is it, I would recommend this for you if you want to use Debian, but don't care for the Debian install process. Because... Debian has zero non-free binaries or blobs or whatever in, in its standard ISO. The one that you go, if you go to debian.org or .com or whatever it is and download that ISO that they have on the front page and then try to install it like on that laptop behind me, it's not going to work because that laptop requires a non-free driver for the Wi-Fi card to work. And they hide those ISOs. So that's a big problem with Debian. But... Moreover, once you get past that hurdle, the desktop environments that they offer, which they offer several, I don't believe they offer any window managers, but they offer several desktop environments. They're all stock in terms of looks and feel. And if you know what XFC looks like stock, you'll know that it desperately needs a refresh in terms of design. It looks really bad. And honestly, Plasma out of the box doesn't look all that great either. So the minimal amount of designing that Sparky has done is actually really nice. They haven't taken it so far as something like Garuda or something like that. It's not crazy in terms of design. It's very minimal. And it may not be to the taste of everybody, and obviously you can change it. But the fact that it's better than what Debian itself offers is nice. So if you want a lightweight, minimal Debian distribution that is highly maintained... Sparky is a good option for you. Uh, for me personally, I think that App Center would drive me crazy and I'd never use it. So their premier feature that they seem to work a lot on is that App Center uh, would go wasted on me because I just used the command line. Uh, but that's probably would be true of no matter what distribution based on Debian that I used because most of the App Centers or App Stores that they have on Debian-based distributions, including Ubuntu and Mint, they're mostly trash for me. I'm just going to use the, the, the command line. That's just me. I'm a nerd. But if you're a new user and want to use Debian, this is a great option because the App Center is actually really good and it has a ton of software in it. I mean, when you're looking at an application store, the is you need it to work, like I said, and you need it to have a lot of software in it. This one had a lot of software in it, and that's a win. So uh, definitely give Sparky Linux 6.0 a try.
If you want to follow me, you can do so at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Marcus, Meglin, Sven, Jackson, Ivan Tool, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, Arch Center, American Camp. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.